Economic sociology allows us to see what other approaches to economic life often miss. Take the example of how people buy and sell art and determine the price of priceless artworks. Art markets are great examples of how culture and institutions fundamentally shape seemingly pure economic processes such as the determination of a price. Economic theory suggests that prices are the product of the unmediated free interaction between supply and demand. In art markets, however, both supply and demand are heavily mediated. Supply, for example, is determined not by natural law, but by how artists, dealers, galleries, auction houses, collectors, and museums allow for certain objects to reach the market. Supply is often controlled to avoid flooding the market with a particular artist's works. Too many Picassos for sale might depreciate the value of other Picassos, so galleries, dealers, and collectors often time the supply of objects to the market to minimize any potential loss. Demand is equally mediated. Fine artworks are sold in very specific spaces like galleries and auction houses where the buyer's experience is shaped in significant ways. In galleries, for example, prices are largely absent. The gallery is a white cube that distances art from the more polluted world of commerce. Auction houses are more overtly commercial. Their prices are conspicuous from the catalogs displaying the artworks to the screens and conversations in the rooms where the auction takes place. How prices are determined, however, is not through the invisible hand of supply and demand, but through the work of experts that make the market possible. Consider the case of this bronze sculpture by the French artist Henri Matisse. At more than six feet of height, the sculpture represents as an expert noted, Matisse's most monumental and ambitious sculptural undertaking and the longest lived single project of his career. This spectacular sculpture was sold at the auction house Christie's back in 2010. Ostensibly, the sculpture is really just a couple of tons of bronze worth perhaps a few thousand dollars in raw materials. How did the market price this particular object? How much was this Matisse worth? How did supply and demand intersect? The following video of the 2010 auction is quite revealing. I want you to pay close attention to what happens as Christie's staff works to sell the Matisse matching supply and demand. Plot 65 is next. The only Matisse back four showing on the screen there and as illustrated and described at length in your catalogues. And $18 million starts it at $18 million now, at $18 million, $19 million, at $19 million, $20 million, at $20 million, $21 million, at $21 million, $500,000, $22 500,000, at $22,500,000 now, $23 million, $500,000, at $23 million, $500,000, at $23 million, five now, at $23 million, $500,000. Against you here at $23 million, five now, at $24 million. It's this side now at $24 million, against the two of you. At 24 million 500,000, 25 million, 26 million. What do you give me, sir? 500? 26 million 500,000. 27 million. Connor's bidder now at 27 million. 27 million 500,000. 28 million. In the room this side at 28 million against the two of you now. What's that? 30 million. On the telephone at 30 million. 
500, sir, at 30 million, against you here, sir, now, at 30 million dollars. 30 mil, what's that, 31? 31 million. Thirty-one million five hundred thousand. At thirty-one million five hundred thousand against you, sir. At thir thirty-one million five hundred thousand dollars. Thirty-two million. At thirty-two million dollars. Thirty-two million five hundred thousand. At thirty-two million five hundred. Thirty-three million. At thirty-three million dollars. Against you, Connor, thirty-three million five hundred thousand. At thirty-three million five hundred thousand dollars against you here, sir. At thirty-three million five. One more, sir. At thirty-three million five hundred thousand dollars against your bidder now. Thirty-four million. Thirty-four million dollars against you, Connor. Thirty-four million five hundred thousand. Thirty-five million. At thirty-five million dollars now, in the room at thirty-five million. One more. At thirty-five million dollars, gentlemen, speed. What's that? No, a little more. 200. 35 million. At 35 million dollars. Sir, on the aisle. 35 million 500,000, where we were before, at 35 million 500,000, thank you. At 35 million 500,000 dollars, this side now. 36 million. They're ahead of you. 36 was in the room. At 36 million. In the room here at 36, against you here and here, at 36 million dollars now. One more, sir. Yes? 36 million 500,000. At 36 million 500,000 dollars. 37 just ahead of you in the room at 37 million. <laughs> Five, sir. 37 million 500,000. At 37 million 500,000. Either of you now? At 37 million five. 38 million. At 38 million dollars in the room this side at 38 million. 38 million five hundred thousand. At 38 million five hundred thousand dollars. One more, sir. At 38 million five hundred thousand dollars. 39 million. <laughs> At 39 million. 39 million 500,000. At 39 million 500,000 dollars. Against you both. At 39.5. This side. 40 million. Will you give me, sir? At 40 million 500,000. At 40 million 500,000 dollars. At 40 million 500,000. Against you both now. At 40 million 500,000 here. Not yours, not yours. At 40 million five. One more, sir. Yes? 41 million. 41 million 500,000. At 41 million 500,000 dollars. Still this side at 41 million five. Against you both, at forty-one million five hundred thousand dollars. Fair warning now, sir. At forty-one million five, forty-two million, forty-two million five hundred thousand. At forty-two million five hundred thousand dollars. At forty-two million five. There's a chance, Connor. At forty-two million five. No. You sure? At forty-two million five hundred thousand dollars, the bids this side against you here, against you here, and selling not yours, sir. Forty-three million in time. <laughs> At forty-three million against you, sir. Forty-three million five hundred thousand. 
at $43,500,000. Still against you, sir, at $43 million. It's still here at $43 million. Against you here and here at $43,500,000. Last chance, sir, now, at $43,500,000. Fair warning. And selling it this side, not yours. All done at $43 million. For you, sir, $43,500,000. 930, thank you. The video reveals the different types of institutional, cultural, and relational investments required to make a market possible. Selling a Matisse isn't just a matter of putting buyers and sellers together in the same room. Importantly, it requires orchestrating a complex web of social interactions. Think, for example, of the institutional context. Buying and selling artworks could take place anywhere. There is no need to actually meet in such a large room. In certain moments, it may actually be unsafe to hold these physical auctions. For example, priceless artworks can be damaged with just one little mistake, causing millions of dollars in damage. Yet this room matters. Its aesthetics, architecture, and arrangement all suggest that this particular market is also a performance. There is a stage, there is an audience, and there are protocols of behavior much the same as those you would encounter in other high culture, upper class spaces. The institution of the auction house formats how the market evolves and takes shape. Think also of how the auctioneer uses his skills to actively create a market. The auctioneer doesn't stand there passively waiting for the audience to make an offer. He and his team use their gaze to engage members of the audience. The particular strategy they use is to create a so-called run. That is, they lock their sights on two people who they get to compete with one another. When a run dries up, they try to identify a new pair in the audience. They use all their social skills from their bodies, arms, and stares to small jokes that elicit more participation. They effectively make the market. They generate demand. And with that, they create the price.